Welcome back. Yes, welcome back to the midday edition of New Day. The day dedicated for workers worldwide. But don't forget, we have brothers, sisters, uncles, nieces who have the training but cannot find jobs. I'm talking about unemployment in the country. It is a phenomenon that has gained a lot of mileage in recent years, and it's something we want to interrogate further. Why do we have this situation on our hands in the country? With me to discuss this is the man who has it all, who has been involved in training the next group of workers in the years to come. He is Professor Fred Magbongolowi. He is the provost and president of Academic City College and former dean of engineering department Ashesi University Prof. Welcome to Thank you. Thank TV you for today. having me. Okay, okay, all right. So what's the root cause of this rising joblessness in the country? Well, I think um, if you talk specifically about graduate unemployment, then you also you should also look at the curriculum that we are delivering, um, whether our national aspirations are aligned to really what we are delivering in our institutions. Um, our graduates are coming out without the right skill set that the market is looking for. Our graduates are coming out looking to be employees um, rather than employers themselves. Um, and each time I talk about this, what comes to mind really quickly is a gentleman I met in the US um, who a friend of mine worked with for a while. And as my friend was getting ready to finish graduate school, his boss called him and said, hey, Bernard, what are you going to do next? And he said, I'm looking for a job. So this young man started laughing. He said, you're looking for a job? Do you know how I started this company, which is $10 million today? It was my high school project in electrolysis. So the, the fact that you know, we, we have all these good, excellent high schools in Ghana, quality education, and yet these kids are coming out and not getting a job, means that they are not able to take what they are doing in the classroom to translate that so, into an so enterprise. So, Prof, you are an academic. Yes, sir. And um, you run a tertiary institution. That's right. So what is different about your curriculum okay. that will help uh, okay. um, ensure that the people who come out of your school mm -hmm. are ready for the market and okay. that they, uh, placing them wouldn't be uh, a problem? So our, our philosophy is that in our current environment, Universities are responsible for giving students the right skill set. That there is no any other place they're going to go out there and get skill sets. So which means that if you're an engineer, we make sure that we're not only teaching you the analytics, we're teaching you the experimental, we're giving you an environment to simulate real life situations, and we're giving you a class lab and workshop where you can actually build things. And the objective is that some of these things that you build while you're a student could become an enterprise. Um, when I was Dean of Engineering at Ashesi University, we make sure that first year engineering students actually build products, test those products, make sure that those products work in their very first year. Yeah. Because for us, engineering is an experience yeah. and not just a theoretical experience, it's a core practical experience. So we make sure that at a very early stage, we pushed the knowledge. But we also create an environment where students absorb this knowledge. So it is not a hostile environment. It's a holistic education where we emphasize on their communication skills, their critical thinking abilities, and then they can do spirit. Yeah, OK. Yeah. You talked about experience, which is something that employers look out for yeah. before you know, taking uh, people into their fold. Yeah. Um, the government <laughs> is launching a flagship program this morning or okay. today. If, uh, uh, the Nation Builders Core. Cool. Do you think it would help stem the tide of unemployment in the country? Well, that's a, a pretty contentious issue, but since I have no political affiliations, <laughs> um, I think I can explain it objectively. I think it's a start, it's a good starting point. In the absence of nothing, you know, it's worth looking at this. But my guidance to the government would be. We need to start from our points of strength. What are we good at as a nation? What are we good at as a nation? We are very good at 
we, we have Escoco. We are agriculturalists by nature. We need to make agriculture sexy for graduates to want to be in it. I just read recently about a young lady who said she graduated from Winneba three years ago and she's still selling fried yams by the roadside. Yeah. And I said, why not? You can actually focus on frying yams to a point where you can actually export it. You can have it served on planes. You know, so that's the kind of entrepreneurial spirit we need to inject in it. I also think that um, tourism, if you go to tourist sites in Ghana, they are inaccessible. You will find foreigners riding on these motorbikes, uh, aboso kinds, trying to get to these sites. You go over there, there are no restaurants, you can't even buy water. If you, trans, if you, if you actually transform some of these areas into tourist attractive sites, you will employ people. So I think, you know, politicians have the ability of these knee-jerk reactions and slogans and trying to make people, things look like they're actually doing something. And nothing is really happening. I yeah. think we need to think through this, you know, deeply. 100,000. What about the other 150,000 that have no jobs? Yes. What are you going to do with them? Yeah. So I, I think you, you've touched on, a, should I say, a raw nerve um, on uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Yep. Yeah which is something that uh, every time I say this, mm -hmm. uh, after school, if I had an opportunity that of the mm -hmm. kind of talk going mm -hmm. on in the country mm -hmm. in recent past mm -hmm. on entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and the fact that mm -hmm. do not, graduates should not leave school mm -hmm. with getting job yeah. as their number one priority. priority. Yeah. But you say, what can I do mm -hmm. to also create uh, uh, employment. Exactly. So wh wh what do you think mm -hmm. um, in, in our, in our mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. is lacking when mm -hmm. it comes to mm -hmm. entrepreneurship spirit, building that mm -hmm. kind of spirit in mm -hmm. us? Mm -hmm. So let me be clear. I think we are a very entrepreneurial society by design. By design. If you drive through the streets of Accra, you see young men and women shoving things into your faces. Okay. What we haven't done is how do we really pull them out of the traffic light, and turn them into a fighting force. Now, to solve that problem, you should have entrepreneurship centers where you can provide short-term training to these people. Okay? You should have a mechanism where you can give them seed investments, and as their businesses pick up in some sort of cooperative, as their businesses pick up, government takes out their money from it and allows them to go. So I think this is for the, the, the non-formal sector. This is how we get to take the kids out of the streets. Yeah. From the formal sector, I think every university needs to have an entrepreneurship center. That is what we have at Academic City College. We have an entrepreneurship center where students can take their ideas, whether it's from the lab, whether it's from home, whether it's from you know, friends, and bring it to this center and start to incubate these ideas. Yes. Okay. So talking about entrepreneurship, yeah. in her hopes of securing immediate employment after completing tertiary education, mm -hmm. dashed, mm -hmm. but after unsuccessfully seeking for employment in the job market for three years, 31-year-old mm -hmm. Joy Ayensua Gansa has taken a bold step venturing into the sale of fried yam mm -hmm. for a living. Mm -hmm. Joycelyn Wood spent some time with her and has come through with the following report. Joy's gained admission to pursue a Bachelor of Science degree in sports coaching at the University of Education, Winneba. She had big dreams, dreams of working in a school, a keep fit sports club, or with a sports organization. Upon completion of her university education, she was faced with the stark reality of a problem thousands of graduates in Ghana grapple with, the challenge of graduate unemployment. Despite writing dozens of application letters, Joyce was still unable to secure employment. When you go, they said there is no job embargo unless you wait. So I even tried the public schools. And the funny thing is, I went to one public school that I've been teaching. You take that three months, then they will not even give you salary. So I, and, uh, every morning, I'll take her from my house to the place. And it's too much. For three months, no paying. Then I decided to do something for myself. After three years of being unemployed, she decided to put her destiny into her own hands. It was not the usual white collar job, but one she found fulfillment in, serving people by selling fried yam. 
And this business is what now caters not only for her needs but also that of her child. At least on a day I saw like 250 Ghana cities. Other is not part of it. But if business is very good, if I should include order and everything, I make 300. In addition to selling fried yam, Joyce has added fried plantain seasoned with spices, popularly referred to as kilowilly, to her growing business. And Joyce does this with a touch of class. Senior lecturer at the sports department at the University of Education, Winneba, Dr. Jaton Ahmed Baba, lauded his former student for the initiative and encourage other unemployed graduates to be innovative. For those who have no jobs, they should just look up. These are, these are the few examples they can do. Who knows? She may even forget the coaching very soon. You know, if she keeps expanding what she's doing, I've suggested to her other things that she can add apart from the yam. Data from the Institute of Statistics, Social and Economic Research of the University of Ghana has revealed that only 10% of graduates find jobs after their first year of completing school. Joyce looks forward to expanding her business by opening more sale outlets in the near future. She challenged the youth to venture into entrepreneurship whilst urging government to take urgent and pragmatic steps to address graduate unemployment. Yeah, so that was um, the Joycelyn. Um, Prof, what's your take on this story? I think it's an excellent, innovative, futuristic, um, we should do more of these. I think the era of the classroom only stuff is over. People need to take des their destinies into their so own. So this is a big lesson to uh, members of the Graduate uh, Unemployed Association yes. and the Nurses uh, Unemployed Association that uh, you can also start something on your own, yeah. very small, yeah. you never know know when Where that is, is going to land you going forward. But let's come back to okay. Let's come back to uh, the Nation Builders Core, Prof. Okay. How viable mm -hmm. um, uh, is this in your own mm -hmm. personal and professional mm -hmm. view? Mm -hmm. Well, my, you know, again, I will go back to a framework. I have not seen a clear framework what the objectives are, what we intend to get out of this. If it's just to solve the unemployment problem, then it's a bandage. Okay? If we see it as an opportunity for students to go in for just national service purposes, okay, then it's laudable because I think every graduate who benefits from government sponsorships in public universities and even in private universities should go out there and do some national service in an area that contributes substantially to the economy. But if it is intended to be a permanent solution, to this menace of unemployment, I think it will become what we've seen earlier, the Youth Unemployment Association, all these slogans that change hands with Yeah, so, so, so as someone with mm -hmm. significant amount of know-how in yeah. this area, yes, and, and being an academic yes, and a thought leader for that um, mm -hmm. purpose, mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing, personal, your own personal capacity? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the government will not come to you, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. given your, your, your views mm -hmm. and strong views mm -hmm. about unemployment and how to get our graduates mm -hmm. into workplaces, mm -hmm. um, don't you think you can come out with a paper that, you know, you can also forward mm -hmm. to officialdom mm -hmm. and see what they can make uh, out of uh, the situation? If you all sit on the fence, yeah. then you have issues and mm -hmm. uh, matters being mm -hmm. implemented, mm -hmm. perhaps in the wrong way, the if, wrong if way. you had come in with our professional know-how maybe you, we would have contributed positively to... Well, that's, that's, that's right. It's easier to sit on the fence and, and criticize. I'll tell you what I'm doing, not just as an academic, but as, as, as somebody who has practiced my act in industry for over 16 years. I make sure that I am training the next generation of students who will not be dependent on government and government handouts. That is what keeps me up at night. How can I teach them better? How can I give them the theory as well as the practical experience that I had? 
So that can do spirit of being able to go out there and change the dynamics. That's one thing that I can do. Um, in terms of you know, whether there is a paper out there or not. You know, my area is not in public policy. My area is not in development economics. My area is in engineering. So if anybody comes up to me and says, hey, can you define a strategy for us how we can make our engineers employable? I'll be able to do that. Um, and I've only been here for two and a half years, so yeah. I'm not really plugged into, into the, the system. system yet, but yeah. if, if they do reach out to me, I'll be very happy to have a, a very positive conversation because the issue of unemployment is something that I blog about all the time on my Facebook. And I also identify opportunities, you know, like in the tourism area, I identify opportunities in the Greek area, I identify opportunities in the educational sectors where I think government can make meaningful contributions. Yeah, um, here we are talking about graduates unemployment, but yes. there are graduates who have been fortunate enough to get jobs. Yes. Are we getting the best out of them? Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. general view is that, mm -hmm. uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, when you are getting into the job, the attitude is different. Mm -hmm. Once they get formal employment and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the freebies that goes with it, mm -hmm. they become mm -hmm. different kinds mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to people in workplaces now? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are talking about unemployment, mm -hmm. but without productivity, there will not be capacity building and um, um, big space for mm -hmm. more people to come in. Mm -hmm. So for those who are already employed, they have a lot more work to do yeah. to create their spaces, yeah. you know, growing their businesses. Yeah. What, what would you yeah. um, have for them? So I would say this, that in my experience, having been back for a while now, most of our graduates end up in professions for which they were not trained for or did not aspire for. We have people graduating and ending up in the financial sector, which seems to be the biggest absorber of our graduates yeah. these days. Um, so that's a problem in itself, when people cannot get what they actually school for, or people cannot get into programs in the universities that they would, they would have wanted to. So that's a problem in itself, and it's a motivation issue. Now, when you do find a job, my advice to you is that, or to the students out there, is you have to perform. You know, I, when I counsel graduating students, the first thing I ask them is how come people get hired the same day or the same week or the same month and this, or in the same year and only one becomes a CEO, a CFO or a COO? What is special about those people? So you need to make sure that when you get into the workplace 20 years from now, you become one of those C-level people, yeah. which means you have to deliver and has to deliver with quality. And you know, my grandparents used to say, there is no dirty work, dirty people do them. So when you get the job, make sure you do the best that you can. If you are a cleaner, make sure you are the best cleaner. Because somebody is looking at it and saying, this guy is up to the game. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. And that was very insightful. Yeah, we thank you for joining us on at TV3. And we know that our students and our workers out there watching us have taken a cue from this uh, advice that you have given them. Yes, in particular to those already in jobs, that they have a lot of work to do in creating opportunities for the people out there to also have uh, uh, opportunities to join the workforce. We will take a break now, and when we come